Hello and welcome. Let's see if this is working. Uh, my name is Yannick, I'm the French guy from Switzerland and uh, I am streaming some Python tonight. So um, I see that the latest changes I made to my layout. I didn't take into account the, the chat was so low on the screen. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to fix that later. Uh, yes, we're going to do some Python. Um, I'm going to uh, tweak the config editor for um, Streamberry, which is my attempt at building some kind of replacement for a Stream Deck, but uh, running on a Raspberry Pi with the um, touch screen, the official 7 inch touch screen. I have it here. Uh, it's not very clean, as you can see. And I have made a, an enclosure, a 3D printed enclosure. And right now, the, the pie is not even in there. Um, and things are falling from that. Okay, um, I'm going to come back at that. Oh, thank you, Wimpy, for the, the, the bits. <laughs> My first ones. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, troubled. <laughs> I'm going to turn the monitoring off uh, on my audio because of the lag, and I I'm not used to that. Is the the music okay? And the uh, the audio is it okay? It seems to it seem to be okay in the monitoring, but just uh, waiting confirmation from the chat and. While the confirmation arrives, let's switch to, I think it's this screen. Yes, it is this screen. This is my lovely Visual Studio. Music is subtle. Uh, I take it that it could be a little more, a little louder, a little less subtle then. <laughs> let's do that. Let's push a little bit the sound. How's that? Okay, where were we? Uh, last time we worked on that. Let's run that. So that's the config editor for Streamberry. And so there's going to be uh, five by three buttons on the, the Pi's screen. This config tool is not running on the Raspberry Pi. This is the equivalent to the Stream Deck UI that uh, Wimpy... Um, showcased in one of his uh, streams and I am uh, getting very inspired by that uh, UI to make this one so this thing is going to run on the on this on the PC it's going to create a config file the config file will be read by the part of uh, Streamberry that runs on the PC and then it's this is going to send the icons to whatever device is connected to that, so... Hey! Thank you, Monica, for the sub. Thank you very much. You are the first sub of this channel. You will forever be the first sub at, uh, uh, on this channel. Uh, and so my first goal is now reached. One of one. <laughs> yes, first sus subscriber. Thank you very much. Uh, what was I saying? Yes, so this config file will be read by the uh, the server part and sent to the client. So right now I am working on the um, the Raspberry Pi client, but we can imagine that we could have I don't know a, an iPad app, for example, or uh, an Android uh, Android app, which could be written in Flutter. Who knows? <laughs> See how things. Uh, are getting together, Python, Flutter, and so on. So where were we last time? Yes, we last time we managed to load and save the configuration. So if I reload the config, now everything comes back. And um, quick recap for anyone who was not there previously. Uh, do I have icons? No, because I made a mistake at one point and I lost the icons that I made earlier, so I might not have. Let's see, I know I have images somewhere. Uh, where did I put those images? 
probably there, there, and where's my directory and where's my Twitch thingy? And we should have emote 01. There you go. We can drag and drop icons. Uh, we can't drop drop icons on buttons that are already assigned. Uh, and if we double click on an icon, they are removed. We can add pages. Uh, we can add uh, not a banner. Let's let's get the bugs. By the way, the the channel points are called bugs because I thought it was funny. I might be the only one to think that it's funny, but <laughs> they're called bugs. Yes, bitmojis. Yes, uh, I uh, Apple bitmojis actually. Uh, why can't I remove this page? Ah, there's a bug. So when I double click on one of those tabs here, it removes the tab. So if I double click on tab number three, then it disappears and tag tab number four takes its place. Let's verify. Ooh, more bug. I was able to remove the, the plus, uh, which is not... Which is not... Ooh, well, instead of doing what I wanted to do, I've got to fix those bugs. So it's cool that uh, I have people in the chat so I can show my app and then I discover bugs. Mm, that's great. All right, let's uh, have a look at those bugs. If I were a serious developer, I would, you know, file a bug on my GitHub issue thingy, but yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. So let's get some bitmojis. And by the way, I've uploaded those to Twitch, but I have no idea how you can use that on the channel. I'm, I don't even, I'm not even sure you're supposed to be able to do that. Uh, okay, so let's put some icons on tab number three and then remove tab number two. And now we can see that it's... So th this this is the previous tab number three, which is not tab number two. But now I should not be able to double click on this plus here. I don't know how I did that because as soon as I click, it adds one. But I also should be able to remove the last one. So there's a a problem here. Uh, so let's have a look. I uh, think we don't need the we don't need the terminal for now. And ha let's have a look. So we have double click somewhere. Mouse double click. Uh, probably not this one. Double click. Tab bar double click connect self on double click. So on double click self dot remove tab index. Mm hmm. That's weird. That is very weird. Self dot adapter. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. So I'm adding the tab bar double click to hmm so on double click I arrived there. let's put the breakpoint here and let's add some tabs and remove this one okay we are here that's working now if if anyone has any idea about uh, what to do with the the bugs, uh, let me know because uh, I have to admit I I don't really know what to do with those. So uh, okay, so I click on tab number three and it says remove tab. Okay, remove tab is not self loading, but we are not loading. If index equals equals self dot count minus one, so index is two. Um, self um, 
maybe I can... Mm, I can't see the, the number, but... In index is 2, and so it's not gonna... Yes, it's going to do something. It's inserting... Thank you, Eric, and welcome to the stream. My second sub. Woohoo! Thank you very much. I need to take the time to go and sub to your channel. So I haven't done that yet. I'm, I'm, I still hope that one day I'm going to be able to catch one of your streams live. Oh, for six months in advance, Eric. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that. Oh, thank you very much. That's, uh, that, that's confidence. <laughs> thanks. In, thanks a lot. I, I'm really, uh, uh, I'm really touched. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, what's, what's going on here? Um, so that's index zero, one and two. And if and I double clicked here, and so it did. It said, "Okay, that's the last one, which is not true." And then it inserted. Oh, what's unchange? There is something weird going on here. There is something very weird. I double click on this. And that's supposed to call... Oh, no, that's removing the tab. Yes, okay. That removes tab number two. And then because we removed tab number two, it, it inserts another tab. That's weird. Why did that do... Why did I do... Did I do that? Because... What it wants here, I think it's, no, I have done something weird and I don't know why. <laughs> Just be nice to me on the racetrack. Yes, I will. I will. For the first 10 seconds. So just for the record, uh, Eric and Monica and Martin, we are... What do you mean, for just students not un responding? Oh, it's on, on breakpoint. Yeah, so um, we are racing uh, online uh, on Sundays on Wimpy's World uh, Twitch channel. We are playing Hotshot Racing, which is a very, very fun game. I need to bring the, the chat because I can't read the, those things. There is so much mutual love and chill out in all of our streams. Yes, that's called a community, I believe. <laughs> yes, uh, well, we are a, a good community, I think. We kind of complete each other. Uh, we, don't, we don't do the same things. We don't stream the same things. Although we tend to do the to do our streams the same way, so we're following the uh, the path of uh, of the OBS Meister, Mister Wimpress. All right, let's go back to work. Wrong, wrong screen. <laughs> right, so. Um, I'm, when I remove a tab, I do some weird stuff. So if I remove tab number two, two which is index one, I guess. Yes. So that's working. It says, okay, I'm going to change index. Uh, so tab number one. I don't know what should, tab number one should be removed. We're not loading. and uh, We're not changing the last one. So it doesn't do anything. But if I click on plus, oh, I know why I did that. Well, I think I know. It's in case I remove the last. 
the last tab. Because if I do that, that's the last tab. I click that. And now I get here. But that test is wrong. That test is wrong. So what kind of test should we do? Let's debug self.kunt. Um, kunt equals self.kunt. Um, if we put kunt here, we didn't change anything, but we are now able to put a breakpoint. And run that again. Yes, Wimpy, you are right. We are greater than the sum of our parts. And I think we each other uh, influence each other. You know, we, we push the limits of what we can do because every time we do something new, one of us does something else that is awesome. And then we tend to get from, from that to improve. And that's really great. So let's add a few pages in there. Uh, there we go, I need... There we go. Now, I want to check some things. Let's bring the emojis back. The app and the emojis. Uh, this breakpoint is going to be annoying. But, hey. Okay, so I want to make sure that I remove... The correct page so i will double click on this and uh, now we we're getting here okay that didn't uh okay let's double click on this one okay we are going to remove that index one yes that's right and i just forgot to and now we remove number three, which is index two. Ah, uh, but it did call unchanged, so it, it won't let me. Ah, oh, well, I can do that here, knowing that it's going to not work. Okay. Kunt is three. We still have three tabs plus this number here so when do we want to insert the tab only when there are no more no more tabs so let's move on move on that's the case that's where we want to remove our tab so count equals one so my guess is what i want here is if in the, uh, if count equals 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 one. Uh, let's remove this breakpoint here. Uh, stop and restart. Yeah, I, I I did watch your stream, Eric, and uh, it it kind of reassures me that I am not the the only one struggling. Sometimes on my streams. And uh, please, everyone, never, ever, ever go and watch uh, never, ever go watch the Ubuntu on air from uh, Tuesday. Please don't. <laughs> okay. So, what I didn't expect was that... Oh, I see. That's the remove tab. And the remove tab calls un unchange. Uh, I don't want that to happen, or at least I want to take care of that. What? What is going to happen if I delete the last tab? Unchange says Oh, okay, okay. So unchange is called when I click on one of those. It means on 
changing the tab, switching from one tab to the other. And then if I click on this one, on this plus, I get inside this code. And if I clicked on the last tab, so the plus, which is at index minus one, then I insert that. Okay. The thing is, apparently when I remove the tab, it also calls this function. So I need to guard against that. Is it to guard or to guard? To guard against that. It's okay. It was a learning experience and I'd rather... Uh, I'd so rather than having community members volunteering to host streams then that go a little wonky than having no community interest at all. Yeah, well, yeah, it was. It was an interesting experience, both for the audience, I guess, and, and for myself. So I have now learned that, you know, a little, just a little bit of preparation and counting on the fact that it worked on another app on which I was uh, working, it's not enough. So more preps next time. And as I said, next time, so that's going to be a week and a half from now, something like that on the Ubuntu on Air channel. It's going to be um, PHP and Angular development part three of two, take two. <laughs> Hopefully that's going to be the last one. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, let's think. I need to safeguard uh, against the unchanged function uh, while I remove this tab. But I also wonder what's going to happen when I remove the last one. Let's worry about that later. The same way we guarded against uh, changing tabs while we are loading, I think we should do something like self delete deleting equals true then we remove the tab and then well we can actually wait until we we are done to unset this flag and then we only do that if not loading and not and not deleting i also need to uh, nothing to do with with Python. I also need to think about a party, probably sometime. Maybe next. Maybe this weekend. Maybe Saturday night. Uh, when the little one is in bed, I think it's gonna be a lot easier to have a Saturday night party than a weeknight party. Uh, I think U.S. people might still be uh, at work. Uh, depending on, on where, where you guys are. But yeah, probably Saturday night. Uh, what's wrong here? Attribute deleting defined outside init. Yes, yes, that is true. We are going to fix that. Self.deleting equals false. I follow... Um, what's his name? Anthony... Anthony, oh, I forgot his, his real name, but he, he goes by Anthony Wright's code on Twitch. He's, he's the guy who wrote uh, tons of modules, of Python modules, and uh, he's, in, he's involved with, uh, with Python itself. And it's really interesting to watch him. What sort of party, says Wimpy? Well, that's... Um, that's the problem. I have no idea what kind of um, subscriber, um, affiliate party a developer throws. You know, like, I don't know. I was thinking about opening my Visual Studio to the world and let people write code with me. You know, each, each one, everyone writing a piece of code or, you know, you guys trying to delete some stuff and <laughs> me finding books. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I really have no idea. I'm going to have to think about that. Or if you have ideas, please, please tell me. I tell you what's not fun. Reg regex processing on messy strings with horrific delimiters. Yes. Um, 
regex processing is never fun. <laughs> Even if you have clean entry and stuff like that, it's never fun. A hack fest. Yeah, what do you have in mind, Martin? We could, we could, maybe you know, we could get together, find a, a an open source project with some, well, fairly easy stuff to do, and then uh, fix them together. Integration testing is never fun. No, big pad, it's not. Uh, it's not, but. <laughs> It's not fun to put in place, but if the if that's put in place properly, then it's really useful. But no, it's never fun to put in place. Is that what I'm describing? Uh, what I was describing is um, if we go uh, here down on oh I'm I'm hiding that. Let me hide the webcam for a moment. You see down here um, on the bottom right of Visual Studio, there's a click to run live server. And we've done that with BigPod once. If I click there, it's going to start the live server. And now the server is live. Or maybe that's not this one. Uh, and maybe I'm. I'm uh, it might not be this one. There's a, um, an option somewhere that we have tried with BigPod and Eric that will allow someone with with Visual Studio to connect to my Visual Studio and edit the same files or the same project as me. So I was thinking maybe we I could just open that and you guys could uh, you know do stuff on my project. Maybe that would be a project that it would be specific for that. Or maybe we can we can do a collaborative project or something. I don't know. And Big Pat says integration itself isn't fun either. You find yourself in, uh, in integration hell way too quickly. Yes. Do you remember Big Pat where the the option is to share Visual Studio somewhere? I don't remember where it, where it is. The Docker. Oh, Live Share. That is that what I'm looking for? Yes. Start modification and de debug in collaborative mode with other people in real time. You can also share the access in uh, read-only mode. Right. So if I click here on this green button, why is my mouse not captured? Why is my mouse not captured? Ah, big screen here. Double click on that. Capture cursor. There we go. Live tweaking on OBS. That's much better. So if I click on this button here, uh, I think I get a URL and a password. Let's try. It is live and you can now start audio calls. Uh, no, I don't want to start an audio call. Uh, well, there's the link. It's here. I shall probably stop that. How do I stop that? I get to live share again. I think it's. Uh, I think it's not shared anymore. Or was it? So you guys have the link now, which uh, is probably not a good idea. I don't even know how to stop that. Oh well, if someone connects to my Visual Studio, I will see it. <laughs> uh, where was I? Yes, I was trying to fix my bug. So now if we go back to the application, we should be able to create new tabs and delete tabs. Okay, so that should not happen. And that should not happen either. So those are two bugs that I need to fix. I need to approve people to join. Great, great. Awesome. Uh, yes, I was saying, so if I'm on tab number three and I delete it, that should not happen. 
I should automatically select Previous tab. So on double click, self dating, self remove tab for index in range of self count minus one. So that goes from zero to self dot count minus one. So um, if it index is zero, then I write a right page something and then I write index plus one. So that's working, I think. If I add uh, many tabs and then remove number three. Yes, that. But if I remove this one, I need to. If I remove the last one, I need to go to the previous one. Okay, mm, let's see. Let's have another variable here. Kunt equals kunt and uh, kunt. Okay, but then over here, I'm gonna have to do something with when index and kunt are equals equal. Mm, don't know. So if I remove this, if I remove the last one, so I'm going to click on zero one two, and it didn't even stop. Why is that? Because I probably changed the code while the application was running and this is not PHP or Flutter. Okay, let's add more tabs. I'm going to double click on tab number two. There we go. Index is two and count is three. So if index equals Three. One, two, yes, one, two, three, yes. So index is two and count is three. So if index equals equals in um, count minus one, then I shall, I should, if uh, count equals equal, uh, index equals equals count minus one, then uh, do I have a select? Ah, that's gonna be a problem because I am now in the. I'm not in the main window. I am in the tab. Oh, I'm in the tab container. So yes, so the tab container has a list of tabs. Uh, set selected. I don't even know how to do that. That's a Q tab widget. Let's uh, ask our good friend, the search engine. Ooh. Um, so that was, I said, a Qtab widget. So Qtab widget, select how to set current tab in Qtab widget by name. And it says Qtab widget, find, find child tab name. And get its index like this, index equal, index of page. Or set the current ID directly by name like this. Set current widget. A method that given a tab name returns a list of indices. So that's probably what I want. Let's see. Oh, but I, I have this. I already have the index. So I only need to do this. Okay, so self dot set current widget, and that's gonna be what? Uh, uh, index minus one? Index minus one. Argument of type int cannot be assigned to parameter widget of type q widget. Which, because that's. 
index index of Ooh. set current index set current index not widget let's see if that works uh, restart the app I have lost my OBS done good evening Graham yes I can do <laughs> set current widget thanks I didn't see your message before uh all right, Monica, thank you for joining. Have fun with your guests. Now that the world is kind of coming back to normal, we're beginning to have guests again. And I I am actually invited this weekend with my daughter. So we're going to see real people for, for real. Uh, let's remove tab number three. Uh, let's uh, let's say we're confident in our engines. Uh, unnecessary penalties. Yes, I'm going to remove that. So if I remove tab number three, it selects tab number two. Great. Tab number two, it selects tab number one. And now we're going to have a problem. If I remove tab number one, we should have um, inserted another tab because now we are screwed. Okay, uh, unnecessary parenthesis did, did, did say, so let's remove the parenthesis. And I think there's an uh, a unnecessary white line here. Um, okay, so what happened? What happened is that we removed... We removed tab number zero and tab number zero, zero was the last real tab so when we arrive here if hmm, but then when we remove tab zero we arrive here index is gonna be zero and count minus one will also be zero it's going to try to do that. So we need to insert the tab prior to that in the, in this uh, same test. If uh, index equals equals zero, then we need to self the uh, add tab. And it doesn't really matter. Ah. Not really add tab that I need to do. I need to do that. Save that insert tab. Whoa, 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 where are you going? I need to do that. Self dot insert tab. Okay. Control shift I Okay, so that's the page that's the new page. It's going to insert the tab after, right? It doesn't say, but insert tab index self index okay so index would be zero right that's it that's that's the thing insert zero uh and that i know that it's going to be page one because we know that it's the uh last page and the new page is page of self so let's do that and uh, let's run the app Okay, removing middle tab, last tab, and then page one. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Oh. I am confused. Oh, because index equals zero, so setting the current index index to minus one. Is probably not the best idea. 
There we go. And we're going to set the index to minus one. Yes. So, so I'm thinking I'm going to add an else here. And so if that, that tab has been inserted, maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, selected. No, so we're going to select it. That's okay. That's okay. We can do that. Let's go. Uh, let's restart that. Okay, remove that. Remove page one. Remove page one. No. 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 Why? Because I'm stupid. That's going to be much better. The five. Yes. Yes. Let's prove that it actually removes the page by adding a channel point. Or maybe a 10k bits. Okay, and then remove the page and everything is removed. All right. That is fun. Let's open our config back. That, that is still working. <clears throat> Let's add another page. Save this configuration file. Uh, sample that it's become. Yes, I want to replace that. And uh, if we remove all those pages and reload the configuration, we have our two pages back. Okay, why did I close the uh, file manager? I don't know if you're like me, but I, I find myself reopening that file manager in on, on every platform about half a hundred times a day, something like that, because for some reason, I keep you know, closing it. Look at that, sub 1, sub 2, and sub 3. Aren't they beautiful? I did some advanced research for those uh, icons. Okay, save this to the configuration, yes. And, uh, well, now, you know what? Restart the app. And reload the config. And we still have the pages and the icons. Okay. All right. That is working. Now I have started uh, adding stuff here. But I have a problem. And my problem is... How do I tell the main window, which manages everything, that I have selected one of those elements? The drop target itself is a, a class, an instance of something, and then there's the the page, uh, which is the the tab here, and then there's the container here, and then there's the main window. And so I need to uh, go and tell the main window that I have selected one of those buttons in order to fill that with the proper information. And I have no idea how to do that at, at this very moment. So, uh, let's, let's uh, have a look. Save, load from, page, load from, and drop target. Drop target. So that's the mouse press event. That's what is happening when we click on target, a, a, an icon. And you need to find better icon for your stream decks, uh, Eric. Yes. 
those are very hard to find. I, I, I find that every time I want to tweak some graphic stuff, because, uh, because I'm not a graphic guy, because I'm a developer and not a graphic guy, I, I spend like hours finding icons uh, because uh, and because I don't know anyone who can do that for me and and it's also that I, I, I just need one or two icons at a time and so I won't ask someone to draw me one icon uh, I, I might ask someone to do some icons for the channel though but uh, we'll see uh, well um, yeah I spend a lot of time doing that uh, and uh, Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not. But I will, I will tell you if I find good icons because I have, uh, I've bought a stream deck, a red one. It should be there tomorrow or at the very last on Monday. But yeah, I bought a, a red stream deck, which doesn't mean I'm going to stop Streamberry because Streamberry is like my my pet project. I want to bring it to completion. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna have the Streamberry and the Stream Deck. So with that, I should have more than enough buttons. Maybe I can use one for audio and one for video or something. Mine are adequate, but the rest of the R streamers are way more creative than me with their graphics. Yeah, some people are are like that. Uh, some some people just you know they they take a. Like game port, they take a pencil, a, a pencil, a pencil, a pencil, uh, and and they draw stuff like in in no time, and they they are a work of art. So for Streamberry, I don't think it's gonna be really artistic because of the rev the resolution of the uh, the the screen of the seven inch touch screen, which is. 800 by 400 and something. So, yeah, it's not gonna be as beautiful as the Stream Deck. Okay, how are we going to bubble the mouse press event up to the main window? We can't really have an event because, well, I guess I could pass the main window down to, to the mouse event. Because the problem is, if, if I want to define an event, it's going to have to be a bound event. And so it's going to have to be defined here in the main windows constructor. Did you get ads, Big Pod? Did you get ads? I, I, there's nothing I can do about that. I think I did uh, check the uh, the uh, no ads for subscribers, but there's nothing I can do with uh, with ads. Did Did you get some ads already? Uh, so, how can I do that? If I define an, an event here, if I do something like self dot uh, drop target selected equals by cute event uh, signal. Here, can I assign that to a global variable? Thank you, Eric, for joining. Have a good dinner, and uh, tell your little ones that uh, Daddy is safe on the track for at least half an hour of Sunday. <laughs> Thank you again for the subs. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so that signal is by, is bound to the main window. 
And so if I wanted to emit this signal, I would have to get a reference to this one. Hmm. Can I do something like... My signal... I probably can't do that. I'm going to declare this variable here and then do my signal equals self dot drop target select selected. Can I do that? And then I would go to the drop target mouse select uh, mouse press event. If we have an icon, uh, yes, an icon, then we draw a border. Then we have this drop target selected item equals self. Oh, you know what, big pad, I think we can. We can do something about that. Probably. Uh, what if I click here? What's going to happen? I need to learn. I need to learn. No, that's not going to work. Okay. Let's not do that then. Uh, oopsie. Let's, yeah. Oh, great. I closed the chat on my OBS. <laughs> uh, hello, Cheesy Bacon. I am doing well. Thank you. I need to find my Twitch chat again. It's there. Uh, where is it? View docs. Uh... It should be there. There it is. It's back there. Uh, I'm wondering if you could use the observer pattern to inform the main window that the button has been selected. Have you got a model view kind of thing going on? Um, I haven't really taken the uh, the model out of the uh, widget tree but that's a good suggestion I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have a look at that uh, probably off stream just to not bother you with my uh, Google skills googling skills but for now I think maybe we can try that maybe we let's let's see if we can emit my signal. It's going to complain, probably, that, uh, yeah, it, it's going to say it cannot access emit because it doesn't see that by signal is actually a, a bound signal. But let's see if at runtime it works. No, it's not. My signal is not defined. Because, because why, why, why is, why can't it see that? Why? It's there. It's a global variable. Why? Holy crap, it's Wimpy's world. Yes, it is. Graham says this... Uh, you, I forgot to change the, the screen, so the, the chat is still there. This is the kind of thing I'm thinking of. I've not read the article, but it's got all the right buzzwords in it. <laughs> yes, let me... Let me... Uh, let me do something here. I can't do that from here, so I'm going to have to do this from somewhere else. Hold on. Let me close this. 
Uh, go there. Go to my uh, creator thingy. Uh, where is that? Uh, community role manager. And what? Uh, how does that? How is that been? S C H Z. S. Not S C H Z. Uh, which one are you? Which which one are you? The C H Z B A C O N. You are this one, I guess, and so. You should be able to post your link now. And I'm going to make Wimpy a... I can't, well, no, I can't. Oh, Wimpy's already a moderator, okay. Great. So. Have you any... Have have any of you guys looked at the other net project? Other net. Other net. Let's do that. Oh, okay, if I do that from here, it's not working. While we're here, I'm running, so I'm trying to right now copy something from the OBS embedded. Um, widget and it was not working. Let's um, let's do something like this and on OBS do something like this and let's go and have a look at that. Satellite radio and data casting. Receive updates broadcast for the digital age. Odonet delivers a multimedia broadcast to small Portable receivers by uniting a globally scalable satellite broadcast with easily accessible technology and rich digital media. Other than it brings a new communication platform accessible tool. Okay, I still haven't uh, any idea what is, what this is about, but maybe you can uh, you can tell us more about that, or even better, do a stream. <laughs> Uh, multimedia content through delivery and so on. Okay. All right. I'm gonna keep that in mind. And ooh, that's neat. I'll have a look at that. I actually wanted to do some Raspberry Pi stuff tonight. But I wasn't able to find a USB A to USB A cable. What I wanted to do is related to Streamberry. I wanted to configure a Raspberry Pi into a serial gadget, uh, which mean, which means, I would be able to open communication like uh, uh, serial data on the USB port and do the same thing on the. The PC side and exchange data like that. Now I know a Raspberry Pi has a a Wi-Fi connection, but it would be one more option for Streamberry. So we could just plug the Pi to the PC via USB. Um, I don't think. I'm gonna have to measure the the current it takes when the screen is on, but I don't think you'd be able to power both the Pi and the screen from the USB port. Um, but yeah, uh, communicating between the PC and the Raspberry Pi from the USB port would be another option for Streamberry. Another option is to configure the Pi as a network gadget, which means when you plug the Pi in the PC, it becomes 
a network interface. So a new, you essentially have a new NIC on your PC. And then you can open SSH uh, communication. So it's it, it's a um, standard network uh, socket, you know, like like any kind of uh, a thing. And the by needs to run a DHCP server. And it runs on that that DHCP DHCP server uh, only works on the USB ports. So just plug that, and there you go. And I see conversation about Starlink and and uh, other that other thing we just saw previously. Other net. Okay, so yes, I don't understand why it doesn't see uh, why it doesn't see my signal down there. What did I forget? I don't know what I forgot, but it seems that I did indeed forget something. Maybe I did write that wrong. I don't know. Let's try again for the last time. See if that works. Nope. Nope, nope. Okay, so let's forget about that idea, which was a bad idea anyway. And try to think about something else. And the obvious thing that comes to mind... Mind? Is to is to pass a reference to the main window down to down to everything else. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that either. What did I do? I did something with the drop. Target. The drop tag target here as a class attribute selected item. I think we did that. What if it's kind of a singleton? So what if I was doing that here? Here I could define main window. Oh, it's not going to let me define a variable like that. What did I do with the drop target? I just didn't type it. Okay. So let's do that. That's the main window instance. That's the class instance. The class variable attribute, however you want to call it. And then once we are constructed, we can try and do main window dot underscore main window equals self. So that works. And I should be able then to call a function here. Do something like main window dot underscore main window dot say hello well say hello does not exist I don't remember if if that can no it the language server for Visual Studio Code for Python is nah not the best one Yeah, that should be main window and not underscore main window. And let's def say hello. And it's going to take name as a string. Uh, it returns nothing. And it's going to print hello name what's wrong instance method should take a self 
something. Indeed, they should. Indeed, they should. Invalid syntax. Just forgot to the column. Uh, say hello is not a member of none. Yes, it is. It's just that you don't know that it's a uh, that it's a main window because your language server is uh, a bit meh. And it says hello world, and it says hello world, not as I, ex I wanted it, wanted it to say that, but like this. Okay, so that's that's working. That is working. Open recent, yes, and then select, and it says hello world. Now I want it to say something that is not world. I want you to give me uh, self. Okay, and so that is being said here. You are now a drop target. And so. Ah, uh, blob target is defined after that, I, I believe. Yes, using viable drop target before assignment, unused target. Target dot, target dot what? What do we have in drop target? We, uh, that's a Q lab label. So we should be able to get the the text some somewhere. Oh, no, we don't have a text. It's an icon. So I'm gonna have to invent stuff. I'm gonna have to do that. So let's do. Oopsie, not that. Definite self. That set. That. Uh, Name equals something here. Def get name. String. And that returns self. That's my name. Delt. Mm. And that needs a self here. There we go. And we should be able to call that from the main, except, except, except drop target is not defined yet, just yet. Yes. And so, plus drop target. The problem is, Drop targets will probably reference main window. It does here. Huh. Huh. I am once again in a difficult position with my communication. And I once again don't know how to fix that. That's going to be a problem. Well, Cheesy Bacon, you could, you will be able to do that. Uh, but um, yeah, there's a, there's a snap. Uh, it's a really, really, really early version of that. So don't install that. Uh, it, it won't do anything. Uh, it's uh, it's being developed right now. The snap you have was a uh, a test of um, feasibility. So I I did make the snap and I sent that to Wimpy uh, so that he was uh, he, he, he was able to install that. But that doesn't work. So don't 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 set your hopes too high. 
But uh, yes, in the end, it's going to be a snap. And it's uh, even going to be a... Hopefully, an ISO that you can uh, flash on your Raspberry Pi. And then it's going to boot into uh, Streamberry. And gen you then connect to a server. And it's going to get the, um, the config itself. The the pie, the the um, the part that is running on the Pi is uh, is uh, using zero conf. So as soon as you have the server part running on your PC, you boot the uh, Raspberry Pi and it will find the server itself. No configuration needed. Uh, <clears throat> and since there can only be one config active at a time. You should see the icons pop on your Raspberry Pi screen. Um, uh, well, that's the goal uh, anyway. I don't know if that's going to be the case initially, but that's the goal. Looking for a good DIY stream deck type solution. Was looking at a Arduino Pro micro build last night. Yes, that's also a solution. I have... I have... A... Adafruit, Kibo, 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 something. Uh, Adafruit. They have. Uh, uh, that's the one. It's there. The Neo Trace tra M4. I have this thing, which obviously you can't see because. Uh, I. There we go. I have this thing. Uh. It doesn't have any icons, it's just a keyboard with buttons, but um, the thing is, it's um, you can program that in Python, in um, uh, Circuit Python, and it's usable as a HID device. So when you plug that into your computer, um, you can simulate uh, macro uh, keys, so you can assign uh, macro keys on this keyboard and then um, uh, use uh, the um, shortcuts on OBS for example so that's that's also a solution yes it is it is sweet indeed and Pimoroni has something that is also really sweet Pimoroni.co.uk Pimoroni has Something as soon as my internet. Uh... Oh, that's spearmorning.com. I think. Yes. They have this. The Kibo. And they have that with uh, clicky keys. So that's nice. Again, no icons, but also 4x4 uh, LED individually addressable and usable as a HID device. And. Uh, yeah, that, this one is a little bit more expensive. It's uh, fifty pounds for once uh, for sixteen keys. The other one was sixty dollars for the double keys, but those are clicky keys. Um, I think you can ch change the caps, the keycaps. Uh, and uh, yeah, looks great. Each time I go to this website, I I have to restrain myself from buying like about half of what they've got. They've got plenty of stuff. Anyway, this stream is not sponsored by Pima Maroni or Adafruit, but I am not, you know, opposed as uh, <laughs> to any kind of sponsoring, so you guys, you can contact me, <laughs> just in case. Um, yeah, so I haven't really solved my problem yet. I need to bubble an event up. Uh, Python observer. Yeah. The observer is given. No, 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 no. So there's a subscriber, a publisher, two subscribers, and a publisher. The observer method. The subject data X view. 
So that's the observer, and we have two concrete observer. So one would be my main window, and one would be the drop target. And then we would have the subject, which would be, okay, observer, concrete observer. Mm hmm. So I would have, I would, <clears throat> I would have to define the observer class and the subject class. That basically replaces the the py pyqt signals uh, stuff. I wonder if Qt includes something like this, though it's such a common thing in GUI programming. GUI, GUI. I, I don't, I don't know how you say. Here we are, By cute five observer. Then. Binding a PyCute PySite widget to local variable observer. Python 3 pattern recipes and eight idioms. Well, we are already at the bottom of the first page on Google, and everybody knows that if it's not on the first page, then it doesn't exist. Although that's not true. Sometimes I find a link somewhere in a three-year-old article hidden after the third page, and that's the solution to my problem. But that's rare. That's rarely the case. But that's going to give us the same thing, I guess. Yeah, so we would need... Uh, yeah, that's that's basically uh, a queue, and then each time someone accesses that and emits the signal, it's it's the signal, it's the signal thing from from Python, from yeah, from PyQt. Except, oh, but if the no, the signal needs to be. In, uh, instantiated uh, needs to be created in a queue object uh, in a queue object I think the queue, uh, you're n you no you can't but hold on a sec I can give you moderator privileges for at least this stream and maybe revoke that later depending on how you behave so the thing is, I just can't seem to be able to give you moderator right right from this window. Users in chat, maybe I can do something. Uh, gram, I click on gram. Mm, I can't, I can't make you. Maybe I can click that and make you a moderator from there. No. But I have found something. I have found something. Okay, if you search for cute doc models view programming, I think you'll find it. All right. All right. Let's try. Control C. Let's go to here and do that model view programming cute widget 5 15 6 fair enough wondering view delegate sorting two models included in cute the two standard model provided by Q, the Q standard item model and Q file system model. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to, you know, given the length of this thing, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give that a good read and see if I can change um, by Qt, um, Streamberry for that. But if I understand correctly, and if we wanted to do that uh, by ourselves, we would have to have a 
class somewhere that holds a list of signals or events and then add convenience method to subscribe to that and emit that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give that a good read. It's going to, it's starting to be late. It's half past midnight here. And I have been streaming for an hour and 25 minutes, so I think I'm going to end the stream here. I have I have fixed bugs, so I'm happy. Let's go back to the chat. The general principle is that you have a potentially small object that stores state. And when the user interacts with the UI, uh, that state gets updated. One object can be observed by multiple parts of your UI. Yeah, it's kind of what happens in in Flutter, where you, are, where you have your widgets and the stateful widgets have their state. And then when you set the state, um, the widget is uh, refreshed. But that's only on one widget, though. Um, Although you could, you can add listeners from one widget to the other, and then the other widget gets updated. But no problem, cheesy bacon. Uh, thank you for joining the chat. Thank you, thank you for joining me. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, probably Saturday evening, uh, around again, probably the same time as as tonight. Uh, 11 p.m. my time, which uh, which will be like 5 p.m. in the East Coast and 5, 4, 3, 2 p.m. in the uh, on the West Coast. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna try and have a uh, getting affiliate party. So I just got to affiliate and uh, I want I want to try and and do a special stream. But I don't know what that would be yet. So if you guys have ideas, uh, you know where to find me uh, um, on Discord, either Wimpy's Discord or Monica's Discord. Uh, both of those. I actually have my own Discords, but uh, Discord. But uh, I don't see any reason to create another one. We already have two of those. So uh, yeah, thanks, cheesy bacon. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's uh, it, it was a, a, a goal, you know, not when I started because I never thought I could do that. But you know, you, you do that long enough, and uh, you get to the fifty followers, and uh, and you get your um, I don't know how many hours and and days, and uh, and with a little bit of luck, you've got your three average uh, viewers per stream, and all of a sudden you get the email from Twitch. But uh, you're an affiliate, so there we go. I will uh, try and think about what I will do uh, on Saturday evening. If you are watching this on YouTube, this has been recorded on Twitch on the 7th and 8th of October uh, 2021. Thank you for the bits, Cheesy Bacon. Thank you very much. Um, that's gonna be it for tonight. Thanks for the link. Um, for the uh, object model or the uh, the the thing in PyCute, I'm going to read that uh, tomorrow. That is going to be it for tonight. Take care of yourself, ev of yourselves, everybody, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye bye.